Hey everybody, welcome back to Power Mods. I'm Louis Skibo. I just waterproofed that clutch housing. There's no sense in doing that unless we build some snorkels. And the reason for that is this intake right here, well that's for your engine. There's one like this on the other side and that's for your clutch housing. Both of them took in water and mud and we don't want that. You can see right here. No laughing you. You can see on this side, you know, the filter did its job, but I'm not going to use that. On the other side, the clutch intake is just packed full of mud. I'll show you that in a little bit. So we've waterproofed, sealed the clutch housing. Time to build a snorkel. This is a pretty simple procedure as far as taking this off. We're going to take off these two side fenders, and this rear box. very easily. Pretty handy. Now you don't have to take off that back tire. I did because I was just doing some work in there anyway. But you can see this intake here. Check it out. I didn't at any time go under the water with this. Just a lot of power sucking in a lot of air. Anything that goes rushing by there, any mud or water, gets sucked in. As usual, make sure you put all your little bits and parts and pieces in a box. You don't want to lose any of that stuff. Now, hold on here. Well, these lights are pretty simple. Just a twist in, twist out type of housing. Some air box mounts. Come on. some mud and water in through there. Some kind of a hose here. To figure out where that one goes. I told my wife I was doing this today. She said, why are you going to put a snorkel on this thing? Like, it's not a submarine. I said, heck yeah, it's a submarine. It's what we do. I said, my submarine, I'm going to put wings and a propeller on it. That thing's going to fly. Now, even if you're in the desert and you don't ever really come across water, you're thinking, hey, why do I need a snorkel? Well, you know, in Australia, they have snorkels there, and it's not as much for water crossing as keeping your intake nice and high. You want it up nice and high, keep it out of the dust. Filters last a little longer. They don't get all clogged up on you. So they're a good thing to have. Get everything out of here. There. I'm going to close this air box back up, plug that, and then I'm going to blow all that off. All right, guys, this is where we're at. We tried shooting some video, fabbing things up, but you know what? It was pretty time consuming and it was dragging on. So I fitted most of the parts. We're right to this stage right here. And I'm going to go back. Lift this off, I'm going to show you exactly what we used. And at the end of the video, I'm going to put a parts list of each thing that we used and exactly the lengths that we had to cut and any other facts and little pointers that you need. So as you can see, we ran into some issues. I ran a three inch pipe off the uh, filter housing here. Some guys run a two inch off the main intake and then they cut a hole in the back and they run another two inch but you know what that honestly doesn't flow as much as a three inch two two inches not the same as a three inch so i used a three inch tube ran it right up it's right to here we were going to try to run it up between the seats but i figured my shoulder maybe my helmet might have come in contact with it so i didn't like that i can't do it in front of the bar because there's not enough room so i went behind the bar three inch here inlet outlet for the snorkel and then we'll run our tubes up to here and I'll show you what we're going to do next. But I'm going to take this off now, show you what we did underneath here. Now we're pretty lucky this is a pretty good straight shot. Some of the older RZRs you've got to funnel them in and like spaghetti sauce in here almost. We got pretty lucky and 
as I said, what I used here was a two to three inch coupler. The inlet on this air filter housing is actually two and three quarter inches. So we stretched a two inch coupling over the top, which is actually an adapter, goes to three inches. And we've used a few little things here to make this work. We've used a short piece of ABS in here. Like I said, I'm gonna give you an exact breakdown of what we used. We used a 90 degree, I think it's called a street bend. So there's a female on one side, there's a male on the other side. We used a flex coupler, three inch. We used another piece of ABS, we'll measure that up for you. And then it comes down to a 90, another 90 degree. When it comes down to this 90 degree right here, actually look right here. It comes to this 90 degree right here. All right. And then we've got this little T and I made this little gizmo. This is actually for the, I think it's a crankcase ventilation tube. So I'm just gonna cut that and I'll fit that right on. So that's gonna work out well. This'll seal right up. So that's the large intake. Now this is the snorkel for the uh, clutch housing. This is for the clutch housing uh, exhaust right here actually. And that is a three to two inch rubber adapter. That's a street 90, male, female end, male end, short piece of ABS and a 90 degree female on both ends. And then we have the clutch housing intake, which is another three to two adapter with a street 90. Fits in just perfectly. And we've got 245s here. They're both streets as well. So they have male and female ends on them. Now the good thing about these little rubber couplings, you can sort of offset them a little bit, mount them a little, you know, kitty corner, if you will. When you tighten them up, they'll still seal up. So they're a little malleable, which is good. That's kind of what you want because we're going to need that to get the exact fit that we want. So that's it. We've got our snorkels all set up. That's a good thing. The next thing to do, we've got to get these vent lines routed up nice and high. Now, I think this is off the fuel rail or the injector rail. One's off the fuel tank, diff, tranny. We've got to get those up high. There's no sense doing all this if water is going to get into everything else. I'm going to get this ABS cement. You can get it at any hardware store. All these parts were just picked up locally, Home Depot. Same with the vents and the fuel lines, the fuel vent line. Now, when you're using this ABS, just mark where you want these to meet up. Use something a little brighter than black, but it's, I'm still gonna see it. I'm gonna goop it up with the cement on both sides, put it in, and give it a quarter turn till those lines match. You wanna do that, you only have one shot at this stuff because it hardens up pretty darn fast. Make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area as well. And I'm not a plumber as you guys can tell. That's it. You can tell you're gonna have a good seal around when you see all this yellow goop everywhere. And I'm messy. All you plumbers out there are probably saying, oh my God, what a horrible job. It is what it is. Give that a couple seconds to set up. I've just loosely put these clamps over this two to three inch adapter. I'm not gonna tighten that up yet. I'm gonna leave these little flex couplings kind of nice and loose so I can make the fine adjustments at the very end. Make sure you put this bottom clamp facing the driver's compartment. That way you can get in from the back. This looks like it's sort of twisted out a little bit, but I'm able to twist it into place when I need to after everything else is in place. Now we have to do this guy. Here we go. There we go. Now before I put this snorkel exhaust adapter on. I'm going to change out this little, uh, whatever this is, little fuel rail tube or whatever. I got some of this at 
Home Depot, and it's quarter inch tube, clear vinyl tube. Basically the same as what they use on the other stuff. So I'm just gonna put it on and then just leave it up, route it out, just out of the way so I can get at it when I need to. See where I am, there we go. A little tight in there. To install this adapter on the snorkel exhaust. Pretty tight and once I get everything set up I'll come back in and I'll tighten up that bottom one. Now I'll have to tighten this up. Now the short length is actually uh, three and a quarter inches. It was off on my earlier measurement. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, there's a little bit excessive on there. Don't do that. All right, but it is up and down. Just perfect. Okay. Don't laugh at Louie. Come on. I'm just like one of you guys who's not a plumber. Now, Keely was in here not minding his own business, and he said, are you not going to silicone up these joints around there? And I, I could, but I don't really think we need to. And uh, because, you know, I, I might want to take these off eventually. So I don't know. We're going to try it like this. We're going to do a few test runs to make sure everything's watertight. And then we'll think about doing that a little later on if we have issues. Come on. <laughs> Droopy old thing. My cameraman said to use lots. You got to use lots. Okay. That's it. This little intermediate pipe here is about seven inches long. This is just a standard three inch to three inch coupler. There we go. Now, this one here. I'm not going to tighten that up yet. What the hell is over here? There's a bend here, almost a 90 degree bend. I'm just gonna cut it right at that. Now this little 90 degree fitting is actually a three quarter inch, fits right in that tube, and it actually screws in here, it's threaded into this little fitting. I just put a little lubricant on there just to get this down. So I'm not fighting with it, there we go. Come up and tighten that in a second. There we go. That's what we want. It. So this front and rear differential vent hose is three eighths outer diameter, quarter inch inner diameter. Just gonna put it on the. Floor. This is the front differential. There's a vent on it that goes up ju just underneath the hood. That's not good enough. All right, I've lowered the skid plate as much as I can. And I'm more or less feeding this um, vent line underneath the skid plate. And it's a little tricky in there. 
as I'm on the hoist, I can't really drop the whole skid plate. But I've run a wire through, basically through a little chase there. And I'm just going to pull this vent hose all the way back through the back. I don't want it to come off because it took a little while to do this. And I don't want Jamie to prove me wrong because he says it's going to come apart. All right. Pull your wire, Louie. Peter. Hey. There we go. Piece of cake. Would have liked to have gotten it tucked in a little bit more. I'll do it next time I have the skid plate off. I'm putting a better skid plate on this. And uh, I'll tidy it up then. Now you can see this breather hose that comes off this transmission. I'm just going to leave that hose intact. It's going to come up and I'm going to connect it to the front differential hose and any other hoses that I can, to tell you the truth, because I don't want to be running a whole bunch of lines up. I'd rather just run one up if I can. Now there's another little line here and there's a one-way valve on it or a little check valve and that looks like it comes out of something on the engine and it's just vented to atmosphere. Now I did read on rzrforums.net that there is a spot behind the speedometer, a little hole, a little breather hole there. I have to go in there and plug that up as well. I'm going to do another search online to make sure there's nothing else that I'm going to miss on this because it's very important that we make sure that every available hole is plugged on this thing. We don't want any water to get in any of these parts. And a great place to find that, rzrforums.net. Just do a little search on there. You'll find these videos. You'll find a bunch of other information. And hopefully we'll get input from other people about anything that I may have missed on there as well. I'm going to remove these little hangers or brackets that were used to hold the little housings for the intakes. No need having them there. We're just going to get all full of mud. Now I see that there's a metal brace that these actually support. So you'll want to reinstall these bolts. So I've plumbed that front differential vent hose all the way through underneath the skid plate and it comes up just in front of the motor along the motor mount and in front of a plug right here and then that way the hose won't get sucked into where the exhaust manifold is. We don't want that to happen. It might get a little too warm in there. And I just come up between the snorkels here. Now this hose is the same size as the hose coming off the transmission. So I'm just going to cut this. I left this hose coming off the rear transmission I'm going to install this little T, little nylon T, and that way I only have to run one hose all the way up. I don't want to run two. I don't want too many hoses coming up top. All right. I've left myself enough excess that I can plumb it to where I need. I might cut a hole inside the upper tube, plumb it into there. Not quite sure yet. I was looking for some hose the appropriate size to come off the vent on the fuel tank and I couldn't find it. But I didn't find one slightly larger. There's a way to make this a little smaller. It's not that difficult. All I do, I just step on the hose one foot I just lightly warm it up all the way around, give it a little tug, it sort of stretches out the hose a little bit, doesn't really burn through, if you burn through you've gone too close. I just give it a little pull and then I let it cool down. And that'll actually sort of just stretch it out, make it a little smaller. I'll be able to hook that up and use this hose. If you can see that or not, but it got a little narrower in through here and I'll be able to use that, clamp that right on. Just going to pull this vent line off the fuel tank filter. It's not a very solid seal around there. 
I'll cut this hose where I thinned it out. Let me see how that fits. Nice and tight. And I just picked up these little clamps at the hardware store. So I'll put this down behind with all the other hoses. Now something you're going to have to do is secure these pipes. You don't want them moving around in here. They'll chafe through, possibly come in contact with things you don't want to wear out. I found these little adhesive foam pads in the shop. I guess Keeley had them for something. Not quite sure what they're for. Maybe somebody might recognize them. If you can't find those, just find you know, a piece of rubber floor mat or a mud flap off a truck. And this, I'm just going to put underneath this one pipe. And then I'll trim it off. That just goes on the little cross member. And it's going to keep it from moving around too much. These big industrial or automotive type zip ties. Zip that and this little clear tube that comes off the engine. Gonna secure that in place. Trim it up. Make sure you zip tie these hoses down. You don't want them coming in contact with any moving parts or exhaust manifolds, anything that gets pretty warm. You don't want that to happen. And these don't need to be tightened up too tight. So I've confirmed that I've tied down, strapped down, tightened every fitting that I can find underneath here. And it's time to put the back deck on. And right now, Gonna plumb these. I'll have these tubes ready to go because they're gonna come actually out behind the snorkels. I don't want them in the front, I don't like the look of them. Now that I have the bed installed, I need to connect the three pipes to here, but I don't want to put full length stacks. I'm going to need to have them coupled in here somewhere so I can get the back of this off very easily if I have to in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure a length out, probably cut it in here somewhere. I'll do the same for all three, cement those in, and then attach the stacks with uh, rubber couplers. And if I want, I could extend this up for a really deep water crossing which we might do in the future. So this three inch diameter tube is about three and a quarter inches long. These little shorties are two and a half inches long. When I put them in, it's still gonna give me enough room to remove the box when I have to. Gotta make sure I can do that. If I made them up to here, or if I just ran them straight up, I'd never be able to get the box off. So all I have to do now is just glue these up. You know, and before you actually glue these into place, fit everything first and make sure that it, you can get the box off. You wouldn't want to get everything together and then figure out that you can't get the box off. Uh, that wouldn't be cool. I'll let that set up for a few minutes. We'll hook up our main stacks. So I've made two stacks already. Stacks are about 25, 26 inches long. I use a 90 degree bend, female, female. And I use a little, I think this is called a street. It's about a 45 degree. And I just cut this little piece of two inch tubing on an angle. That's it. They're a little too long. You can always trim it from the bottom tidy things up. I just cut these on a saw. Make sure when you do it you clean out the pipe and the fittings because 
There's a bunch of static electricity in there and it holds all the little shavings inside. Two inch coupling and another two inch coupling. I'm gonna place these on first. If you're having a hard time slipping these fittings on, just lube them up. You can always use some soap and water. Uh, it'll dry right out, no problem. Just spray it on a little bit. It'll slip right down for you. Now, I'm not gonna mount these up too solid right now because I'm gonna be building another cage for this, so I don't wanna go through a whole bunch of hassle. Um, but what I am going to do is use some of this handy stuff here to keep everything from vibrating. I was going to drill and put these into the roll cage, but yeah, no, I think what I'm going to do now is just curl them up underneath this large stack and I'll zip tie it in. This is a little different than most, might look a little goofy, I don't know, but you know what, I'm not big on looks. As long as it does what I want it to do, I want it to keep the water out. So it's got the three inch stack, two two inches, the three inches for the air intake of course, instead of two two inches, which doesn't flow as much. So that's nice and big. Things are strapped down kind of loose till I see how I like everything. I don't know if I'm gonna to wanna to change things around a little bit. So I'll leave it all like that. All I have to do now, bolt everything down, put my tire back on, give this thing a test ride. So I hope you like my snorkel install. I think we've all learned something here today. Gonna to give it a try. Now make sure you go to rzrforums.net. They have all kinds of information. That's where I hang out with the boys. Lots of cool videos coming up. Roll cage, winch install, bumpers, tires, all kinds of cool stuff. Thanks for stopping in. I'm Luis Gibo with Power Mods.